Okay, we're all gonna wave and give them a blessing, say hi. Ready, one, two, three. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we love you. Yeah, there you go, we do miss you. Even I miss you there, Dave. Uh, anyway, I hope you know it's humor. And some of you, when you get to know me, you probably only believe half of what I say because a lot of, a lot of humor, but it's just, I learned a while back that I was too intense, I was too serious, and the Lord said, you need to lighten up and have a little bit of laughter in your life and, and enjoy uh, my presence. And so I, uh, that's, I made a commitment to do that. Uh, we're, it's something that we all are familiar with, but every once in a while, uh, I need a refreshing because uh, the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, is a, a main factor in how, uh, hang on just a second here, is a main factor of prayer. And we're going to go there. Uh, I was worshiping, and I, and I felt the Holy Spirit say to share this true story that happened to myself, um, I don't know, three, four years ago. There was this lady in a wheelchair at the post office that sat outside, you know, and if anybody goes to the post office, you know, there are people there that are homeless, and, and so uh, the Lord provides money to them through some of us, and that's what I was doing. Sweet lady, she would always say, God bless you, and we talk, and uh, so I was driving up 7th Street, and I haven't, hadn't been to the post office, and I haven't seen her for a while, like a couple months or something. And so I was praying and I, I felt uh, that I had to go to the Safeway. I hope, hang on, this has got a meaning to it. I, was, I had to either go to Safeway or post office. And I was thinking, well, I should go to the post office because I haven't seen her for a while. And, and I just felt the Holy Spirit say, no, go to Safeway first. So I went to Safeway first, walked into Safeway, and the, and the Holy Spirit said, go this way. And I went all the way to the back of the, the um, store, and then he said, now go left, now go to the meat counter, and now go around the meat counter. And lo and behold, there she was with her husband standing there, and they were looking at birthday cakes. And that day was her birthday. And they were put, they, I watched and they put the birthday cake back. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I get emotional sometimes. They had put the birthday cake back because they didn't have any money to buy one for. Her. So, guess what the Lord said to do? So, uh, they re she received her birthday cake, but the, it, the fascinating process is it happens to all of us. And, and I think all of us kind of pray that it would happen more. Isn't that a beautiful? I, I was just, I just a warm heart the rest of the day. And, uh, because you're in the right place at the right time for the right purpose when you're in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. So <clears throat> that's, I just felt the Lord say to, to share that. Uh, we're going to go through and reinforce within our hearts how God answers prayer and how he, he initiates prayer and how he wants us to pay attention in prayer. So as I was going driving up, I was in prayer and, and the Holy Spirit said, and the Holy Spirit said. So when you look at the original, very original Father, Son, Holy Spirit, of course it's Genesis 1, 1 through 3. So you're welcome to go there if you want, or you're just welcome to listen. So the very first scripture in the Bible, and the very first mention of the Trinity in action, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Anything God says is going to take place. 
Amen. Now, when God said, the said is the word. I'm speaking, I'm saying, what are coming from me when I say something? Words, correct? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and nothing was created, nothing was made apart from the word. So creation came into existence because of the Trinity. God spoke through his son the word, and everything was created by the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When we think of prayer, we have to understand that while we're praying, God knows what we need before we ask. God knows what's going to take place before we ask. God has already seen it eternity ago, correct? God's already seen everything we are going to do because that's what he wants to take place. And he will choose us to accomplish that which he has already decided he wants to take place. And if, and if it doesn't, and if it lands on us and we're in the middle of something and we don't hear it, he's not going to let it go. He'll find someone else. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So it's always best to be alert that God can use us at any given moment 24-7. God spoke the word. The Holy Spirit was already hovering over the water. Correct? It wasn't that God and spoke and then the Holy Spirit showed up. The Holy Spirit was already there. Now, understand in prayer, Holy Spirit is already there. The Holy Spirit is there because the Holy Spirit is hovering over us. The Holy Spirit is hovering over a situation. The Holy Spirit is moving over a situation or a person because He's waiting for you and I to show up and for God to speak through the Son and we to say that word of the Son for the Holy Spirit to follow through on the answer. It's, it's quite simple, correct? But in our busyness and in our, our, our not remembering God's process, uh, we oftentimes can walk away from an opportunity that God wanted to take place. Now, remember Mary. Here's, here's the beginning of the new creation. Gabriel said to Mary, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, if you want to be any place at any given moment in day, you want to be able to hear the Lord is with you. Amen. Correct? We were talking earlier that if the Holy Spirit doesn't show up when I teach this, we should all go home. So we're praying for the Holy Spirit to be here, right? Thanks, Joe, for doing that. So she's the favored one. God's favor is paramount for being in his will to have that trinity action, that trinity effect take place at any given moment, at any given time, to any given person, in any given situation. And she was very perplexed by this statement, pondering what kind of greeting this was. The Lord is with you. We should start saying that to one another. We should start <laughs> Start your day or there you bump into someone. Give them a text. The Lord is with you. Be there for what the Lord wants for you at this particular time. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found, found favor with God. Now how do you find favor with God? Because you are available to allow God, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit, to do whichever He has planned for that particular moment in the day. And one of the, uh, the prayers that I put back up to the Father after that experience with the birthday uh, person was thanking the Lord that I had actually heard Him say what He was saying. And uh, yeah, there's a thanksgiving to the Lord saying, thank you, that I, I was there. But... And, and, the, 
angel Gabriel said to her, You will give birth to a son, you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. God's involved. The Son of God is involved. And Gabriel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will, church, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason also the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. This would not have happened unless Mary had made herself available and she had a relationship with the Father and she was favored because she had a heart. You, you read her prayer when you go home. Read her what she said after she said, Yes, Lord, be it done unto me. That's a beautiful. It showed how close she was to the Father, what she said. Now the Holy Spirit over, would overshadow her. And that's exactly what it means. We have, a, my love and I have this a little chihuahua, a chica. And if the sun's out and, and that chica's walking alongside of us and the sun's behind us, and, and where is the shadow? It's our presence, but our presence is in the shadow and it, we overshadow her. The Holy Spirit from the sun, the light of God, was overshadowing her because it was the power of God upon her to create what God intended to be created. Hallelujah. So you have to look at, if we're in prayer, we want an answer to God, an answer from God, we have to understand that God is going to indicate what the answer is going to be and what to pray for. And we have to understand that first you pray the Holy Spirit over the situation. You pray the Holy Spirit over the person. If the Holy Spirit is not in and upon the situation, then the essence of God and His decision to speak through His Son and the Son to speak the words to us, that we speak the words for the Holy Spirit to create, it's, it's not going to happen. I hope that's not too blunt. And I think what I, I'll just, y'all just use me. What I forget to do is pray the Holy Spirit over the person. Get the presence of God. Get the presence of God first. And what's in the presence of God? The power of God. And what answers the prayer? The presence and power of God, which the Holy Spirit accomplishes. So the Father desires an event or a person to be healed, to be saved, to be a miracle, a creative miracle. The Father has already decided that. He's just looking for someone out there who would listen to him speak the word. And then the person, you and I are a group, we hear the word and we hear God say and we pray what God said and whatever God says is going to happen. So if we're praying the presence of God on someone, and we also pray, Father, speak that which you want us to speak. See, we, we pray prayers, and you pray whatever comes to your head. <laughs> but the essence of that answer prayer is going to be the spoken word of God. The word that's already in God's thoughts that he gives through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's when you'll see people saved. That's when you'll see miracles happen. And that's when we all here have seen that take place. But the reason it took place is that all of us here were praying the Holy Spirit upon the person or the situation. Amen? Amen. It's just encouragement. And also I felt it's, it was good for you to know what's in here from Ken Burns. So when I'm sitting back there worshiping and here with you, you, you know what's in my heart and my love's heart. She's, uh, she believes the same way. Now remember, there was a unique scripture, and we all know this. Jesus is walking along during his ministry, and 
There's a unique scripture. It's uh, Luke 5, 17. One day Jesus was teaching and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And it says, we all know this scripture, the power of the Lord was present for Jesus to perform healing. How did Jesus perform healing? The power of the Lord was present. What does that mean? Okay, we, we have Jesus. He's uh, spending time. Why did Jesus go up to the mountain in the morning to pray? He, remember, Moses and Elijah would come down and talk to him. I believe that God's angels, when he went up to the mountain, God's angels showed up and said, okay, now this is, what, this is your itinerary for today. At 11 o'clock, you're going to meet this uh, leper, and he's going to ask you uh, if you can heal me. And it's okay, go ahead and heal him. And you're, my, power, I, my power is going to be present upon you to heal that person. So Jesus heard, he only, he said, remember last week, he said what he heard God say, he did what he saw God do. So here's an example of Jesus is walking along, and the Holy Spirit, he's already prayed the Holy Spirit to be present upon him, correct? He spent the morning, and the presence of the Holy Spirit is already there, the Holy Spirit is hovering over him, and the Holy Spirit is just waiting for Jesus to speak the word that the Father had already uh, put into motion, and then that which happened always happened. What does that say for us? Our being in the Holy Spirit, us being with the Holy Spirit hovering over us is a 24-7. Last night, <laughs> Last night we had this, uh, uh, my love heard this car drive up and stop before I got up to the, and you, should, I, you know, when I sleep, I don't hear anything hardly, but she heard. And so it was an, an alert. It was like the Holy Spirit was saying, there's danger out there. And so I got up and got in the car and then chased the car down. <laughs> this is 12 o'clock last night. I have no idea. Anyway, I caught up to him. Da -da, you don't even know the story. He was, he was lost, and I showed him the, which way to go. Out. Now, now, now where to go. <laughs> How to get down to where he wanted to go. <laughs> uh, at midnight, you know, I could have said about anything, but I was nice to the guy. Although when he backed up his car about a half mile from our house, and he got out, I was like praying, okay, God, I think I need your protection here. <laughs> But yeah, so it was. It worked out good. But the presence of the Holy Spirit needs to be upon us, and it's a literal prayer to pray the Holy Spirit. It's just a constant. Paul said, "Continually be filled with the Spirit." That word "be filled" in the Holy Spirit means continual, continually, twenty-four-seven. And how do you do that? Your heart prays. Remember, you're laying there asleep, but your spirit is still receiving from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit could wake you up at 3 a.m. and say, you need to pray for this missionary over in Asia right now. They're in danger. So you always have to be alert and awake. So Jesus had the power present. And the reason there was healing, the reason he could perform healing, because the power was present. And the Word of God was present. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in action, and then I went out of sequence. Uh, there's a baptism of Jesus that we need to see real quick. Uh, Jesus arrived. Jesus arrived from Galilee to the Jordan, coming to uh, John to be baptized by him. After Jesus was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and John saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and settling on Jesus. Now remember, how much Holy Spirit did Jesus have that the Gospel of John said? He had the Holy Spirit without measure. The Holy Spirit without measure. 
So the Spirit of God descended as a dove, settling on Jesus, and behold, a voice from the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Who spoke then? God did, right? There's, there's the Word. There's the Holy Spirit coming down. There's God speaking. Then the third scripture uh, is found in Revelation 4.1. And you have to remember, this is in the context. Where are the prayers of the saints? Where do they go before the throne of God? The, remember? The bowls of incense before the throne of God are the prayers of the saints. So where are the prayers of the saints? They're before the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Father determines that what we pray needs to be answered. So he will speak through the Son and have the Holy Spirit bring about the answer to that prayer. So immediately John was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven. And someone was sitting on the throne, and he was sitting on the throne was like a jasper stone, sardis in appearance, sardis. And there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. And I always stop here. How many of you know the New Age movement ripped off our rainbow? Amen. And I think we should make more rainbows and say, this is what's around the throne of God. We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be afraid of rainbows. Rainbows are a sign from God, and God has one above, around the throne. And I saw beneath the throne a lamb standing as a slaughter. Who is that? It's Jesus. And he had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. It's, it's the completeness and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So there's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and they have our prayers before them, and they are actually praying over our prayers and praying for these prayers to be answered. And when we pray those prayers, we pray, Father God, in your Holy Spirit, by your Son, speak the words you want us to pray. What do you think? That, that a word of knowledge is for the prophecy or a word of wisdom. Why are those there? Why is discerning one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit? Why is the tongue there speaking in another language? Why is the interpretation of the tongue there? Why are there miracles and creative uh, miracles and healings? Why are they there? Because it's the Holy Spirit hovering over us to let us know what God is thinking, to let us know what to do next, to let us know how to pray. God freely gives those to us. God wants us to know how he's thinking. 1 Corinthians 2, God freely gives his Holy Spirit. He wants us to know his thoughts. He wants us to know his words so we can pray his words and his will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants his will done here on earth as it occurs every second of eternity, you can say that. He wants what is happening in heaven to be displayed here and worked out here on earth. And he's given us the avenue of the Holy Spirit to hover over us, to hover over people, to hover over the situation. And he knows that if we plug into him and we desire his thoughts, we desire his words, God, how do you want me to pray? God, what do you want to be said here? And God will give it in the Holy Spirit. And he will speak forth through his Son. He will give his word. And that word will come forth. It will just explode in the midst of darkness. And there will be light. Because God said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. And anything God says, like we said earlier, is going to take place. It's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible for Anything that God says not to take place. Anything God desires to take place anywhere, anytime, to any person, to any situation is going to take place. Nothing will get in God's way. 
Why do you think Paul was knocked off his horse? He was murdering Christians. He was on his way to murder more Christians. He was on his way. He thought he was following God. He thought he was doing God's will. And God spoke through his son. And the Holy Spirit knocked him off his horse. And he got up and said, Who art thou, Lord? He knew he had a divine encounter. Because God decided, This is going to be my apostle. This is going to be my instrument to the Gentiles. So we have them knowing that that God has spoken through the Son by the Holy Spirit. We have the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, when Jesus said, the Father and I are one, if Jesus, sorry, sometimes when you preach, your mouth gets dry and you can't say the word Jesus, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> it happens all the time, so. Uh, now I lost where I was going. Oh, uh, the, if Jesus said, the Father and I are one, where is the Father if Jesus is in your heart? Oh, no, no. It's, so Jesus comes in your heart and the Father just stays on his throne. Huh? No. That, that was, that was a... I didn't, I didn't meant that to be the truth. I was, that was a comparison. Where's the Holy Spirit? If Jesus is in your heart, and Jesus and the Father are one, then Jesus and the Holy Spirit are one. So where are the Father, Son, Holy Spirit in you? They're in you. They're in your heart. The Trinity is in your heart so that God can... Bring about the fullness of what he desires to take place. They, they work together. They're one together. And how many of you remember uh, Romans 8? However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to God. If Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of our righteous, because of his righteousness. But if the spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, God, who raised Christ Jesus from the dead, will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who indwells you. That's the Father, Son, Holy Spirit dwelling in us to accomplish that. And finally, uh, one of the, probably the most used scripture to validate uh, the Trinity and, and the, the church is uh, 2 Corinthians 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So anyone comes to you from one of the cults out there and says, Oh, there's no Trinity, there's, and you can always go to the uh, Second Corinthians 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit are with you all. Grace is salvation, Jesus on the cross, grace. The love of God sent Jesus to the cross because he loved us. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit is communion, it's connecting with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit wants us to fellowship with Him. And so when we stand today, 2022, in uh, March 27th, we have to know that there's 2,000 years of history of the Trinity in action working. Any revival that takes place is the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying we have to do this in, in our church, but there is, uh, how many of you remember the Nicaea Creed and the Apostles' Creed? Anybody remember those? See, you're, yeah, there you go. <laughs> My love remembers. There, the reason that a lot of us don't know about those, and I'm not saying we're supposed to do this, okay? That's not, 
I'm not giving you a word, Pastor Dave, I'm not giving you a word. <laughs> we need to recite this. I'm just as a point here. Back in the early church, the devil was in the even in the first century, the devil was already putting heresy and wrong teaching in the church. Right away. Why? What's he trying to do? He's trying to destroy the power of the church through the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Gnostics. How many remember the Gnostics? You're all going to remember this. Don't worry about it. Don't remember that. It's okay. Early in the, the first century, somewhere in there, the Apostles' Creed became uh, prevalent within the church because the Trinity was being attacked. And so it was decided to put down in writing for all the churches to know what was the, the understanding of what was true. And it would always be there. So the Apostles' Creed basically says, uh, I, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It says, I believe in Father God, the creator of heaven and earth. And it says, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who was crucified, uh, dead and buried. And it says, I believe in the Holy Spirit. So why did they put that there? So you and I here sitting today would have the truth that we need the Trinity in action in our lives. And then uh, 325 AD, there was what I, it was, I was a, the Council of Nicaea, and you don't have to remember that either. But there's a group of church leaders, and they're now listen closely. Episcopos in the Bible is bishop, and, and there were bishops back then to be over the church to keep the word of God pure and to keep the message of the gospel alive and accurate. So when you think of bishops, uh, don't go, you know, medieval up to now. There, there are wonderful uh, bishops, and there are wonderful uh, people of all faith who have the Holy Spirit. I, and, I, another rabbit trail, Joe, I don't know why I do that, but it's, I was sitting there watching TBN years ago, and there was this uh, person of another faith, and uh, he had his collar on, and I went, oh, I think I'll turn the channel. And uh, <laughs> the Lord said, no, listen to him. And he spoke, and I felt the Holy Spirit come all over me. So the Holy Spirit can be anywhere on anyone the Holy Spirit desires, amen? So never sell anyone short like I did. I had to repent <laughs> among my million, trillion other times that I repented. But, uh, the essence of this council of Nicaea, it was because of the false teaching that was in the church that there was no trinity. And had the church gone in that direction, it would have destroyed the church. That's true. So these group of uh, men, Christians, got together and they decided to write this creed that would hopefully be there forever to establish what was the basic foundational truth of the gospel and it was, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe in one Lord Jesus, one, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Isn't that beautiful? And we still have that today. And it, God protected that because he wanted us to know to stand today in the 21st century and to never let go of the action of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He never wanted us to let go of what he decided to take place 
within our lives and, and the people that we're praying for and, and the Holy Spirit and Jesus are praying for. So he established this truth. And we, in, in our lives, can keep that truth going. And we should never allow, it's still there today, there's no trinity. There's certain cults out there that say there's no trinity. Mm -hmm. And that we have to stand on that and stand on the truth. And <clears throat> it's fascinating to me how God established that truth because that is the essence of how he functions in the church, in the world, in his, his heaven on his throne, that that which he desires again, church, Jesus said, that which happens on earth, have it be happened from heaven. Let it happen in heaven, and then let us allow it to be happened here on earth. God's will be done. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God has come to declare there is a Father, there is the Word, the Son, there is the Holy Spirit to establish heaven all over this earth. Amen. Everywhere. That's why there's pieces of heaven on earth today. Because you and I, a group of us like us, have gotten together and we have declared we believe in the Father, we believe in the Son, and we believe in the Holy Spirit. And they will accomplish anything they desire and they want to use us to have people saved. They want to use us to have people baptized, baptized in the Holy Spirit. They want to use us to have people healed, miracles, and communities changed by the power of God coming upon us through the Holy Spirit saying, here's the Holy Spirit. Receive more of my Holy Spirit. My Holy Spirit is without measure. How much of the Holy Spirit do you want to see manifest within our church? Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing hallelujah. So come on up and we're going to just close in prayer. And at the uh, chorus hallelujah, we're just going to worship the Lord as we close. I'll, I'll let them come establish. Hmm? Mm-hmm.